Hey there, Scipio here. In this video, I'll be installing my KK 2.1 flight controller onto the tricopter itself. And then I'll go through how I'm setting up all of the wiring, including the wiring to the receiver, as well as all the motor and servo and my external BEC wiring. So for the installation itself, I'm using these nylon 25 millimeter standoffs. These are three millimeter threads that will screw onto the screws that are holding my tricopter together. So I'm actually gonna cut these down to about 20 millimeters. So I'm just scratching a line with my micrometer and then I'm gonna cut four of these down to size. I then use sandpaper to finish off the rough edges from the cuts. Now I thread these standoffs onto the screws that are holding my tricopter top on. If you remember from the earlier tricopter assembly video, I put some screws, longer ones, upside down from the bottom to the top. And that's so that I can have some threads to screw these standoffs on. So at this point you may be wondering why I'm going through all this trouble to install the flight controller in this method. Most people tend to just double stick tape it on or uh, screw it directly to the top. And my thought was I wanted to isolate it as much as possible from the actual tricopter itself. So there's really nothing hardware based touching the flight controller board. So it's completely isolated, hopefully uh, resulting in less vibration that makes its way to the controller. Additionally, my hope is that these standoffs will also provide some protection should I end up in some sort of a upside down on ground orientation. Not my preferable flight style, but you never know, it may happen. So here's the tricopter now ready to take on the flight controller board. Here's a quick mock-up of how it's gonna fit. And basically slips down and these standoffs along with some top bracing is gonna hold everything together. Now I didn't mention this earlier, but the standoff length needs to be just below the top edge of the foam. That way when we put the top on, it will compress it just slightly to hold it down to the tricopter. I thought long and hard about what to use for the top of this assembly. And while it ranged from complicated to simple, in the end, I decided that these craft sticks were gonna be just perfect. Originally, I was thinking about cutting out a square piece of plywood and setting it on top, or I see a lot of people use uh, like a Lexon or plexiglass or something. But then the challenge is cutting around so that your servo and uh, motor wires can come out, and it just uh, got more complicated. So this is the method I chose to use, and it worked well for me. So I'm just using a, a pencil real quick to mark my center points for the holes that I'm going to use to drill to hold the screws in, and then also marking the edge so I can know how long to cut the craft sticks to. Just like on the tricopter build plans, the screw holes are 50 millimeters center to center, and then the actual width of the tricopter body, uh, in this case, is 70 millimeters. I decided to put my screw holes at four millimeters from the edge of the craft stick. That gives me enough to actually uh, secure, but also enough overlap onto the foam holding the flight controller. Because I need two of these, I decided to tape two of these craft sticks together with some black electrical tape. That way when I drill and cut, I only have to do it once and then I have identical pieces. So I'm using a three millimeter bit with my Dremel to drill the holes, and then I'll just use a cutoff wheel to cut off the sides. So now these are gonna go on to the top of the standoffs, holding down the KK packaging just like this. But before we actually install the flight controller, I do need to attach it to the actual foam box that it comes in. So flip it over so you're looking at the bottom, and it's a good idea if you're not familiar with the KK boards, take a look at the back and make any notes that you might need to because once we flip it over and stick it down, uh, you're not gonna be able to see this information anymore. Keeping with the trend of complete hardware isolation with the KK board installation, I'm using these foam gyro mounting pads to install the KK board to the actual foam block. As you can see, I'm using five smaller pieces to evenly spread out the mounting platform as well as elevate it above the foam so that the uh, bottom side of the pins and all the soldering points uh, are basically equalized. Now that we've got that finished, we can set this down onto the tricopter and then use these top mounting plates to secure it down. 
For screw hardware, I'm using these nylon 3 millimeter screws. I don't remember what size these are, probably about 30 millimeters. So I'm just going to cut them down so I have enough threads to uh, secure the top mounting plates, but short enough that it fits all the way down inside the standoffs. And remember, you've got some screws coming up from the bottom, so you need to keep that in mind as you cut your length. And then just put the four screws in each of the four corners and uh, fasten down the top mounting plates. It needs to be snug enough that it compresses the foam box a little bit and will secure the KK package, as I call it, uh, to the tricopter. Too tight though and you'll strip threads. Next I need to mount my receiver to the tricopter body. I'm pretty cheap so I tend to reuse my receivers on multiple aircraft. So I'm using Velcro for this process. I decided to mount my receiver in the front of the tricopter. That way when I mount my FPV gear, I can have separation between that and my video transmitter. Now it's time to connect the receiver to the flight controller board. And I'm using these 15 centimeter male-to-male uh, -male connection wires. I need five of them, four for the standard flight controls, and then one more to uh, enable and disable self-leveling mode. Now how you connect these to your receiver is going to be largely dependent upon the type of receiver you're using. Uh, if you're using Spectrum, you're probably going to have to figure out exactly which one is your throttle, aileron, elevator, auxiliary, channels, etc. Uh, with FreeSky, which is what I'm using, I can pretty much define it to be whatever I want. So I'm just going to put them in order 1 through 5 and then align that with the order of the uh, KK 2.1 board pins and then uh, set my transmitter uh, channels accordingly. Now when you're plugging these wires into the KK 2.1 board make note that the ground pin is always on the outside of the board. That applies to both these connections as well as the motor connections on the opposite side. Here's how I decided to finish off the wiring. I'm using these little wire clamps I got from Radio Shack. They came in a multi-pack and I'm using the uh, same screw that I have holding on the top plate to fasten the wire clamp to the tricopter. For the motor side of the KK, I'm using this external BEC to provide power to my tail servo. Uh, if you remember from uh, earlier videos, I removed the uh, red power wire from my BECs in the ESCs for motors 2 and 3 and uh, thus I need to provide some sort of power for motor number four which is actually the servo wire. And speaking of servo wires, I'm using this servo extension cable to get from the servo to the board. This cable is a little bit long uh, but I'm gonna make it work. I could use a shorter one or build my own but for now uh, this will be fine. So it took me a little bit of playing to figure out how to get all the wires uh, secured on the back side of the board. And originally I was going to use one of those Radio Shack clamps that I used on the receiver wires, but I just wasn't happy with how tight everything was. I didn't have a whole lot of play in the wires. So in the end, uh, I used some shrink tubing around the bundle of wires and then uh, zip tied them to that uh, standoff on the, uh, the right side there. And then what you see me doing here is actually... Uh, coming up with a way to make this uh, very long servo extension wire a little bit shorter and I'm basically just using a shrink tube uh, and folding it over on top of itself and then shrinking it down that way um, I can keep everything tidy. Then I just zip tied the little bundle here to the side of the tail boom. Here's a look at how I have the ESC, servo, and BEC wires uh, bundled together and then uh, fastened to that standoff. Uh, and I have a little bit of uh, shrink tube just to keep everything uh, protected and tidy. And I'm going to mount the external BEC just right on the uh, top of the tricopter here using that same gyro foam that I used earlier. Oh, and this BEC can be used in either 6 volt or 5 volt mode, so make sure you have it set correctly. I have it set to 5 volt with the jumpers. After cutting the gyro tape to size and putting it on the back of the BEC, I just mount it right uh, on the back side of the tricopter. That's it for the wiring for now. I still have to deal with these uh, receiver antennas, but I'll do that in another step. Don't worry, I'll give you a quick rundown of 
the connection points to the board here in a second. But first, I just want to kind of give you an overview of how things are looking uh, as they are right now. You can see where my bundle goes down uh, next to the battery in the battery tray. When I fold the arms, all the wires are out of the way, so there shouldn't be any wire cutting action happening. And uh, everything is pretty much tidied down where it needs to go. And as you can see, the flight controller is secured in there nicely, somewhat protected and isolated against vibration. And if you haven't noticed, I'm a big fan of the shock absorbing landing gear. Pretty awesome. So as promised, here's a look at the wiring uh, diagram for my tricopter. So starting with the left side, the connections to the receiver. In order, channel 1 through 5, they're plugged in the same way into my receiver. Channel 1 is aileron, channel 2 is elevator, channel 3 is throttle, channel 4 is rudder, channel 5 is the aux channel that I'll use to control self-leveling, engagement, or disengagement. I'll set up my transmitter to match those settings. On the output side of the KK board, Out1 is connected to Motor1 ESC. Remember, Motor1 ESC also has the power source uh, to the board, so that's what's going to be powering both the KK 2.1 board and the receiver. Motor 1 is the front left motor if looking at it from the top rear. Uh, out 2 is going to be motor 2 ESC. That's going to be the right motor. It does not have uh, the center power cable. And then out 3 is the tail motor ESC, which also does not have the power cable run to it. Output 4 is the tail servo, just directly plugged into the board. And out five is where I have the external BEC, which does provide power to my tail servo. I'm not using outputs six through eight. Now you may notice a couple of things missing from my installation that tend to generate a lot of controversy. It's a very polarizing topic uh, with the KK 2.1 board. But what I don't have plugged in is the battery voltage monitor uh, connection or the uh, LED or buzzer for the board. Uh, those would actually plug in on this picture, the top left of the board. I'm not using that because my receiver has telemetry capabilities. But even if I'm not using a telemetry-based receiver, I would probably use an external low-voltage warning device for my batteries. Uh, I'll just say that if you do decide to use the internal battery voltage uh, monitoring, be very careful. The polarity of the pins is very specific and if you plug them in backwards you will uh, let some magic smoke out of your board and it will no longer function correctly. Also, if you plug your power source into your buzzer pins, which are of the exact same configuration, then you will also smoke your board. So all I will say is if you're going to go that route, make sure you're extra careful uh, to plug things in properly and of the right polarity. A lot of people have gone so far as to just remove the pins so they avoid the mistake. I left mine in, I may use them in the future, but since I'm not using them right now, there's no risk in confusing what's what. So they're still in there. So that's it for now. Uh, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one.